In the darkness, I bit my arm until I raised a red bump. I bent long and hard until I could no longer hear the sound of those two divided voices. The falling voice of a woman dropping something precious from her hand, and the rising voice of a girl watching in horror as it hit the ground. The low, raging thunder of the words, and the high, crying rain of the song. But where are the soaring horses now? Where are all the men? Who will be there when the storm breaks? When the hand drops? When the Pentecost falls? Soon. I started humming the song too. Soft at first, then louder and louder. I repeated like a spell until a hand hushed my mouth. The words still echoed in my head though as my whole body lifted into the air. Above me, the ceiling sparkled like glitter and the brass globe spun like a wheel. Its bright bulb throwing odd figures around the walls. My hands flapped like a bird to touch the circle of shadows overhead. On my back, I imagined a set of enormous wings. I floated and danced and sang in a whirling trance. Then I felt the grip of a pair of hands, and I looked down to see my father's face beaming. His light filled the room, and all the objects glowed, and our mouths moved in unison, singing the same song round and round until his Grip slipped, his knees buckled, and my head hit the floor. As smoke rose around me, hot words filled my head, hot names too. A pack of boys in roper boots had gotten my scent that year. I smelled a flowery cologne and fruity hairspray. I smelled a sweet mouthwash and pretty soap. I flipped up my collar and feathered my hair. I scrunched up my sleeves and flashed a wristband. I double looped a knot in my belt. First year in high school, I pushed against my uniform. The pack of boys delivered warnings with their eyes. In the gym, they curled lips, flared nostrils, stamped heels. At recess, they swaggered and swore. In fluorescent hallways, they thrust out their tongues like a wedge of swans to imitate my speech. Then, in unlit bathroom stalls, they shoved their hands in my pants, shoved their fingers in my face. After school, they fed their knuckles to my mouth. I swallowed it all, the oily saliva, the fleshy blood, the feverish words and hot, hot names. Yet I badly wanted to shift shape. I wanted to flick a magic finger in the air like my papaire, to make buildings explode, to gnash teeth, crunch bones. I wanted to stretch my neck, to soar through the clouds, so I leapt from the roof of Divine Redeemer with birds singing in my ears and lights flashing in my eyes. Behind closed eyes, I followed his moves. He ran all way down the street to the end of the bayou and right out of this city, right out of this state, right out of history, as far away as his feet could take him. Come winter, he wore a second hide, wrapped himself in a cloak of wool and slept under the northern lights. No one's dog. He studied the sky and redrew the constellations. No shepherd to heed, no flock to fold. He cut a crisscross path in the snow like a guide for the outlaw and the wayward. 
the outcast, and the best fit. When I finally reached him, he shaded me in the sun, warmed me in the moon. Under his cloak we lay together, and no one could tell the black sheep from the white, or the field of stars from the dome. The show was set to begin. Signaled by strobe lights, smoke machines, and a red flasher lifted from a cop car. Feathers irritated the air as if in search of a head to dress or a sleeve to drape. Synthesizers accused the dancers of sin, and in answer, they raised their hands up to the mirror ball in a bar full of sweaty men and powder-faced boys. Everyone wore a guilty face. An hour later, the angel boy appeared before my eyes in several places at once. In the parking lot, with a shoe missing, a sleeve torn, and an elaborate strand of beads around his neck. In the back of somebody else's car, with his face shoved to the fogged over window, and a set of claw marks overhead. In the middle of the dance floor, frozen while everyone else did the time warp. Mercy clapped the air with her hands. Yes, do, she said. Do this for me. Be for yourself, Mr. Sister. When you get out of this nest, hen feather your rooster. Sissy everything you do. Mister everything you are. Then she slipped one more item from the knot in her shirt dress. A strand of black pearls. Each pearl glowed in her hands and together they looked like the beads from a rosary with the crucifix long lost to time. The only story is worth reading never end, she said. Or else, they all in the same way, to be continued. So, flip a coin and decide. Which way will you go? Heads or tails, whatever you choose. Let it sound like thunder. 